Again, this is outside the, the restaurant where the first shootings that we know of happened. Uh, you remember it's now being described as a drive-by. Uh, and then the gunman went inside the building. Those were the first video that we know of people being treated. As for the Bataclan, the, the concert hall, uh, a, a local television news reporter from South Bend, Indiana, apparently talked to a survivor on scene uh, from ABC 57, and a witness tells him there was no security to get in the concert venue. All he needed was a ticket. Witness Julian Pierce saying, and I quote, everybody was panicking and trying to escape. People were walking over bodies. Still locked down this morning. Saturday morning outside the theater. That's an Instagram picture that came during the concert itself. As far as I know, before the carnage began, the Bataclan, four gunmen died there, three of them. Their suicide vests exploded. One escaping, shot by police, fell, and his suicide vest exploded. Paris authorities tell us all eight gunmen, all of those believed to have been involved in this attack, are now dead. spread over just a, a radius of just a few miles and CNN's Tom Former has an overview of that. All of these attacks took place north of the traditional tourist areas in Paris along the Champs-Élysées, Notre Dame, that sort of thing. And the first one over here, when we talk about the Bataclan theater attack, this was really quite a short distance from the old Charlie Hebdo offices, as you can see. Bataclan theater, friendly, Friday evening, Paris is nine hours ahead of Pacific Coast time, six hours from the East Coast. Listen. The match was played to its conclusion for safety reasons. The 80,000 in attendance not allowed to leave until well after the match had ended. And joining us on the phone from Paris is Andy Scott. He works through the AFP News Agency. He's also been an ESPN FC contributor. Andy, you were at the stadium and the bombs go off outside the stadium about four minutes apart. What's the reaction from the crowd inside the stadium? Well, when, when the explosions were heard, there was uh, obviously the, the people in the stadium didn't realize what was going on. They were actually cheers from some parts of the crowd as though it was some kind of firework uh, that had been set off by some member of the crowd. You know, most people thought that that's what that was at that point. But I think a lot of people, including me, realized pretty quickly that A, these noises were coming from outside the stadium and B, they were much, much louder than, uh, than would usually be the case. So uh, at that moment in time, there was no collective hysteria or anything like that. But certainly myself and around me, people began to realize quite soon that something not quite right uh, was going on. And obviously that has proven to be the case. Well, with smartphones and the such, it's not going to take long before a crowd of 80,000 realizes what happened. When the crowd realized what was happening, what then was the reaction? But obviously, as you say, uh, with social media these days, news gets around very quickly. But at the same time, the match was not stopped. Uh, they played right to the end. There was nobody leaving the ground because they were not able to leave the ground anyway. There was a ring of security around the stadium. So there was no panic within the crowd at any point during the game, even after the explosions. And